Fall Anime 2023 in a nutshell from Giga just dropped. Let's see what he has to say about this season's worth of trashy animes. What the fuck is this? Drink the breast milk, breast milk, fresh from the tap. I think we missed the series to watch, guys. Why did no one recommend me this? You can't say that in front of kids! It's him. It's Mr. Breast Milk. What anime is this? And why did no one tell me to watch this? What am I doing in my life? Every season, I seem to... Is that just clickbait through the intro? Is that just him, Giga, just hooking us with the intro clip? Or is that an actual anime airing right now in this season? I think to myself, man, there is just way too much anime coming out right now. And every yeah. new season anime is like, Hey guys, did you say you wanted even more? The full yeah. anime season really dropped over 60 new shows to choose from. 23 new sequels. The crazy shit is we actually, like, before, we actually tried every fucking season of anime. Literally, like, 40 different fucking anime in this weekly series. Like, I would just check them out, like, three a day, bro. 14 Isekai of Fantasy, a bajillion edgy shows, two racing anime, two she just like me for real Shizuka? Anime, romance, slice of life, action with so many shows, there's only one thing I know I must do. There are what? too many of them. Watch them all. Watch them all. Kill them all? <laughs> On hold? Oh, yes! Yes! This is an iconic thing. He does his intro every time, right? This song plays every time during his fall in a nutshell enemies, right? We'll watch player. One more time. One more time. Mmm. Let's go. Let's go. Rock and roll! CGI. Please. Hands up! Daddy, English! What the hell is this? Is it a bomb? Guess I'm a grenade. Ears. Nobody else can do this but ninja. Bro, what is the CGI? This is ninja? This is a ninja to you? Look what's on the corner of the desk. Ninja? Booty. I wanted to see them for real. You wanna die? I don't wanna die! Thank God and your mom. This is actual dialogue from the anime? Yeah, this shit straight up is from fucking PS2 graphics, dude. You didn't see them. Ah! From the insane <laughs> mangaka of I'm Hero comes an anime about ninja. ninja. Did you know ninja, ninja still exists? Of course you don't. That's why they're ninja. ninja. And like ninja. ninja, this anime never lets you know its name. I thought it's called Ninja. But this is the same anime with Mr. Breast Milk. And now it's a guy in a bra. You saw nothing. He's just going through a little cross-dressing hobby. Next move. Take this guy. Just a normal foreigner, right? What's he doing? Watashi wa gaijin desu. That's right. He's come to Japan to become ninja. ninja. Now I know what you're thinking. Average weeb in Where's Narita Airport. But he's serious. He finds a random sign on the street that says, If you piss here, I'll cut your rod off. Clear. Rotten rot off. Really, this was left by ninja. ninja. A trial. This must mean if you cut off three dicks, you become ninja. ninja. That's the only possible. This seems just like an absurd anime that might be fun to watch just because it's absurd. It's not not good. It's just a fucking meme anime. Are you guys watching this right now? Ability. He approaches a random dude urinating on the streets with a pair of scissors. Easy target. Uh oh, the dick he thought he. Was what did you cut off there? His cutting was actually. That's a sausage coming down. Is this a ninja technique? You know, like wooden, you know, you know, in Naruto, you know, they substitute, right? It's like a wooden lock that's appear when they get hit with kunai knives. But right now it's like a sausage instead of his dick. Odin, it was a bait. He's outed himself as ninja. That's Mr. Breast Milk. That's Mr. Breast Milk. This is easy target. Oh. So he cuts off Mr. Breast Milk's sausage and then. Oh, the dick he thought he was cutting was actually Odin. It was a bait. Why is his eyes like this, bro? There's something so deranged here. Wait, he's outed himself as ninja. JK, bitches. He's oh! ninja too. With ninja, ninja moves, you can do ninja he's things. A ninja! Who is this guy? He's first class ninja. ninja. The show is like a fever dream. Maybe when you need to watch this. Maybe okay. Shit like this would be fun to watch on stream together, you know? Just for memes, you know? We're not gonna make YouTube content on it, just to watch on stream. It'd be fun to watch. That's an Ayakuza side mission. This is the lore accurate ninjas we need. Yeah, alright, they don't have shurikens or orange jumpsuits or summoning ninjutsu, but can your but? favorite ninjas do this? What? What's he doing? Wait. They don't have sure. Wait, wait, or wait, wait. Or... He just farted in a dart shot at watch. Summoning ninjutsu, but can your favorite ninjas Ninja. do this? Wait. Wait for it. <laughs> They're drinking, and a the guy is rizzing this girl up. 
<laughs> by looking at this party trick. Aqua should learn this from Konosuba. Kon Aqua should completely learn this. This would be perfect. You know how Aqua doesn't wear panties? Well, it's like Schrodinger's panties. You don't really know if the panties exist or not, but they could play into that fan service and have Aqua do this in the next season. <laughs> She could 100% do this in the tavern. I feel like in 2023, some of the biggest and best shows have ended up being sequels to already existing anime, and this yeah. season doesn't seem like it's an exception. Our favorite Jujutsu. anime family is here again for round. Man, why does Spike's family do so bad on my channel? This anime is actually goaded. I love Spike's family season one. It's such a wholesome, family-friendly fun. It's for everybody, but no one gives a fuck about it on YouTube on my channel, man. On two, Dr. Stone is apparently going through one of its better arcs. Are we ever going to watch Dr. Stone? I don't know if you guys are actually interested in this. It's a long-running show, and it looks pretty fun, too. Right now, Goblin Slayer is back with... I don't know if we're ever going to watch that. I hear episode one. We might just check episode one. Oh, what's going on here? Some. Oh. 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 Mm, 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 mm. Not as good as DxD Jiggle Physics, but pretty good here, too. Goblin Slaying. Tokyo Revengers is continuing, along with Magus Bride. Seven Deadly Sins as a sequel now? Is this a redemption? Because I hear the final season of Seven Deadly Sins. Y'all seen it, right? I don't have to. I, like, y'all have all seen Seven Deadly Sins, you know, meme, um, meme um, uh, panels, right? Meme anime. Meme anime. Bad anime. Like, look at this shit right here. Like, this is straight up from the anime. Like, th like this isn't fake. Like, this is an actual frame from the anime. This is what happened to Seven Deadly Sins. But I think this is like a revival or some kind of like side spinoff series. Maybe they're gonna do redemption? Oh, what? Seven deadly frames, you're right, you're right. And it's not called eight lethal wrongdoings? You know, I've clowned on seven deadly sins fans enough now, so I'm just not gonna do it. I'll let it looks way better, so it looks way better. Anything. So, uh, let's talk about something else. Um, look, I've just finished playing Final Fantasy 16 recently. All right, Clive. Mid. <laughs> seven deadly mids. When did you get back? All right, here's something I'll gladly clown on. Shield Hero was a dumb the rising of the mid hero. No, no, no. Shield Hero season two. I hear season three was actually, it's going great. I hear season three is actually really good and the arc is fantastic. But I think a lot of people dropped the series on season two. Cause like this series was a revenge story. From season one, everyone fucking loves season one. As its own self-contained story, I think season one was one of the most goaded revenge stories in an isekai. Season two, on the other hand, what the fuck happened with the spirit tortoise? The pacing was all over the place. I just felt like it, Lost everything that Shield Hero 1 was supposed to be, and no one gave a fuck. Combination of bad pacing, you know, low effort, you know, uh, content. I think people dropped it. But I hear season 3 is actually pretty good now. A fun little isekai that did everything it needed to do. Fuck these three bozos. This motherfucker especially. But I think he's going through a redemption arc right now. Fuck you. Fuck this guy, and fuck Kirito right here too. In the first season, so I wondered where the story- I did watch it for the queen though. Oh my god. This queen right here, oh my god. Even Malti, just because she looks like her mom, she's a bitch, but oh, she's so hot. We could go after that. So season two clearly heard me and went, all right, bet. And was horrendously disappointing. Look, I might be- The most disappointing sequel to an anime. Well, I can't say that, but it's definitely disappointing. You're the isekai guy, but even I've got to be picky with what I choose to keep up with. I'm a busy man, mate. So season three is going to have to do something really special to get me interested again. We're doing a tournament arc. Mmm, tournament right off the bat. Underground fighting ring. And new waifus too. Eminence and Shadow Season Whoa. 2. Haha, <laughs> now Peak. we're talking. Which makes this convenient because they are actually the sponsor of today's video in collaboration with High Dive. Yes. One of these days, I will get a Crunchyroll. I will get a High Dive sponsorship. Just watch me. Just, <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. Just watch me. <laughs> I'm not joking. We'll see. Which makes this the easiest sponsor segment I've ever had because I get okay, so okay. written down about the show anyway. All right, and give, me the, give, give me the ad. Give me the ad. Give me the ad. my previous video, Eminence and Shadow. We just watched that, actually. What the fuck? This is an episode for seven. We just watched this, too, dude. Check it out on my channel. We did a reaction to this. In case you missed my previous video, Eminence and Shadow is some... They're not going to sponsor me. They're going to fucking blacklist me for being an anime reactor on YouTube. Let's get real. <laughs> I ain't getting no corporate sponsors here. If we make it a Raid Shadow Legends sponsor, though, we might. We might. One of the most fun I've ever had in the isekai genre. On paper, a show like this should absolutely not work. It's edgy. It's cliche. It's everything it's cringe. you think you roll your eyes at. But, if but it's so edgy and so cringe that it goes out through the other side of the spectrum and becomes cool. It's so edgy and cringe. It go Again, it goes out other side of the spectrum. Comes out the other side, it's so cool. Fully embraces everything and does not give one care in the world what you think. It serves you cheesy one-liner after cheesy one-liner. Mm. The moon is red. Every dumb power fantasy you've ever- 
the hour of awakening is near. I had on a silver platter and you gobble it up like you're a 14 year old kid who's just discovered anime. This is what happens when a show is so unapologetic about itself. Yes. It knuckles down on... One more time, one more time for the fans. You give me lip service. Let's go, let's go. Discovered anime. This is what happens when a show is so unapologetic wait, about Wait for itself. it, guys. Ooh, ooh. And I think she did this after Shadow arrived, right? I'm pretty sure she did this in a response to Shadow. And she says, my dear Shadow, right? She specifically says, my dear Shadow. It knuckles down on being so edgy. It loops around and becomes cool again. If yes. you have a single isekai loving bone in your body, this is what you should be watching. If you're not watching Eminence and Shadow, what the fuck are you doing? And, I, and, and, and like for the vast majority of my community, it's built on Eminence and Shadow. But goddamn, if you're not watching this, bro, you got to give it a chance. You have to. The weebs. Here's the deal. Right now, you can watch both seasons of Eminence and Shadow ad. legally on High Dive, where there are emphasis legally <laughs> emphasis on legally releasing the dub at exactly. I'm never getting a corporate sponsorship, dude. Exactly the same time as the sub, <laughs> so you can sign up for a free trial for High Dive by clicking that link in the description. Where you One of these days, guys, High Dive hashtag Kaka for your legal Eminence and Shadow reactions. You can watch Eminence and Shadow and show my boy Sid some support, along with a plethora of other anime available. What other ones do they have? I don't really. Oh, they got Damachi. They got, they have Damachi. Or there, like Oshinoko and Made in Abyss. Thank you Ooh. very much to Eminence and Shadow Season Two and High Dive for sponsoring me today. W Ad segment over. Right, w Ad. We got to get serious for a bit because okay. we have a new esports anime about. And if, when he says we're gonna get serious, we're not gonna get serious at all, right? Okay, esports anime. Let's see it. Out a recovering gamer, a gamer who's gone without gaming ever since his dad went for cigarettes and never came home because he's like. Okay, like Toji? Dead. At least that's what his mum told him. How does he still count as a gamer? Not once in all his years without gaming did he ever give up his gamer spirit. This is the most classic mom haircut in anime, by the way. And usually these moms are dead first, but dad is dead here, which is actually unique. But every fucking mom in anime that's gonna die in a flashback looks like this. This exact haircut. Exactly. A I don't need a gamer. shower. Who hasn't seen real grass in over four years. Who has to take care of a sickly little sister who's been diagnosed with Ligma since the age of two. <laughs> Not Ligma! Ligma, Ligma, Ligma balls. Ligma balls. <laughs> but despite she did. all these setbacks, he did what most oppressed gamers couldn't do. When his teammates needed a real gamer in the face of opportunity, he stood up and took and then fucking fucking grifted. He fucking just trolled on League of Legends. He went into a rank promo. Some guy's about to get to Diamond 5. It's his last promo match. And what do you do? You go fucking insta log a werewolf and you go, to, you go to jungle and you go to the werewolf camp and you just fucking dance there. You just emo. You role play and you troll him because that's what you do as a gamer. Took it, showing us that even the most broken of gamers could become whole again. That any gamer could achieve their. <laughs> Did you see that? Okay, did you see the mouse flick here? Watch, watch. That even the most broken of gamers. <laughs> watch this mouse flick. Okay, he, he does this. Could become whole again. That any. <laughs> you know, this is like a really intense moment in the anime, too. <laughs> One more time. That mouse flick, he stood dude. Up and took it. Showing us that even the most Holy broken shit. of gamers could become whole again. That any oh! gamer could achieve their dreams. So, in the face of adversity, with the support of his friends, with the crowd cheering him on, he sat down. Turned on his PC and uninstalled Genshin Impact. Hey, come on now. Although you should play Honkai Star Rail instead. Okay, time for a real. Shangri La Frontier. Now, this is an anime you guys have been requesting, and immediately I see foot on waifu. Okay, you got me interested. You got me in. Is this why you wanted me to watch Shangri La? Real gaming anime. Wow, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Remember that feeling? Okay, no more. <laughs> No more. Even when you saw that first episode of SAO before you knew the show it would turn into and the market wasn't saturated with the same isekai-esque no. gaming anime? Well, Shangri-La Frontier somehow gave me that same excitement without- The animation quality looks very crisp here, right? Even having any life-threatening stakes, but just presenting a game that seems genuinely fun to play. We have a gamer who specializes in completing the most poorly designed, broken-ass games only to completely dominate- it's a shitty game with bugs, that's the entire point. Nate had a godlike game. My boy really discovered Elden Ring after playing Gollum the video game. And you know he's a real ass sweaty gamer, because he's one of those motherfuckers who plays with a completely naked build while being- This is the uh, let me solo her uh, from Elden Ring. The guy that just wears a pot and then has like underwear and just shows up to different people's like games and like solos uh, millennia, right? Being a dirty crit stacker. This is the show to watch if you actually want a gaming anime, because it seems like it was made by people who are truly pat- Like- 
actual gaming, like like no game, no life kind of gaming, or like I, I don't know. People have been saying to watch this, watch this. I'm not really so you know convinced, but okay. It's about video game. Wait, did he just skip a cutscene? Oh no. Ah, prologue. Skip, skip it. Yes. Sea dog. Is this a god? Go to the anime. I watched this by myself. Okay, episode one. I just had to check it out. Episode one is literally just. It is just um. It, it's just a monologue of a pig and a girl. But the voice acting is so fucking good. The entire episode was just hard carried by just them monologuing. That was it. The entire episode was just monologuing. But it was so good. I in in a very degenerate way because he got reincarnated as a pig. Yes. Story of a man turned into a pig. Yes. He is a pig. And it, there's a cute girl that like feeds you because you're a pig. Yes. Reincarnated as a pig who's been taken in. He, he's at like the perfect height too to like look up because you know the skirts right there. Yes. By an anime girl. No. I can't. I can't do this again. No. You watch Inukai-san's dog. You. Yeah, exactly. You've watched Inukai-san's dog. You can watch the pig anime. We've come for our pigs now, anime. What's next? Hot spring. Hot spring Ixness. Reincarnated as a hot spring. Cats, ducks, bears, crispy bacon. I'm kind of waiting for like a reincarnated as a horse. Think about this. The entire premise is that you're reincarnated as a stallion with a fucking 12 inch thick girth. Just un, just like, just not erect. And the main girl of the series is like a stable like barn girl. And like the whole anime will be like you and like this girl. And it, it'll be like, you know, reincarnate as a horse anime. Could you imagine the fan fiction, the kind of content that can come out of this? Like, why hasn't anyone thought of this? I mean, we're doing reincarnate as a fucking pig. People are making reincarnate as a vending machine. Now, let's get a little bit feisty in here. Enough of these fucking cute little, oh, I'm a cat girl, I'm a dog girl, like monster moose mission. No, 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 no. How about we make the main character, the guy, turn into a horse, huh? How about that? I think I'm onto something. It didn't die for this. What did we ever? This is Chris P. Bacon, by the way. You see the subtitles here? The, 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 his name is Chris, like Chris, like this, like Chris P. Bacon. That's, that's the pig's name, okay? What's next? Cats, ducks, bears, Chris P. Bacon did it. Chris P. Bacon right there. Chris P. Bacon. Didn't die for this. What did we ever do to deserve this? Oh God, why do we live in a world where dogs and pigs get more bitches than we do? <sighs> Probably to make it as relatable as possible to the main demographic of the anime that they're selling to, right? The audience who's gonna watch this are probably, they want that treatment. They want to be called a pig. They want to be pay piggies, right? <sighs> Please tell me there's something this season that can cleanse my soul. Free run? Is Free Run even a cleansing soul show? I feel like it's just like, like melancholy and just, it's just sad. It's just fucking, it's just like Free Run being stoic for sometimes and then sometimes she like breaks down because shit's too real and it's like, and then she's back to normal again. But it's pretty good. I don't know soul cleansing, but like, it's a good story, right? There's normally at least one new show in a season that is an instant must watch after one episode. And mm. I'm glad to say that this time it's Free Run beyond Another L on this channel, man. I really wanted to watch this anime with you guys, but it just there was just no interest in my you know community in my channel, so I had to drop it. But like I bet the show was amazing and it does well in different channels. You know, in, in, in anime reactions, it's different. It's not you don't drop shows because you don't like it. You drop shows because it doesn't perform well because the audience that the YouTube algorithm has decided that this is your audience doesn't really care about that topic. You know, I, I gotta do what I gotta do, but this anime, solid anime from what I've seen. Beyond Journey's End. Free Run is not your typical anime fantasy story. There's no demon lord, no grand world saving. There was a demon lord for a bit that already got sealed away, right? I forget if it was a demon lord or like a king or some kind of demon, but I, there was some crazy hype, like a magic animation going on in like episode three or something or four. Adventure, no earth shattering stakes are on the line, yet it carries an emotional weight few shows are ever able to achieve.
the weight is basically the burden of like an almost immortal person that has to live and see their loved ones die over and over again, right? That's the entire existential crisis that Freerun has to kind of endure. In episode one, this is the story of an elf girl burdened with an abundance of time, a being who in our eyes is functionally immortal. In the blink of an eye, decades are gone, companions age, friends die, and all she's left with is the regret for the wasted time she could have spent with them. Yeah. It's a story about appreciating the little things in life you might have missed, and I cannot begin to tell you how much they are nailing this adaptation. The scenery is drop dead gorgeous, the serene atmosphere lulls you in, and ev Yes, everything about like. This is an anime like, uh, what, what's another anime that does really well in capturing the ambiance, the atmosphere, the overall tone of the anime without saying anything. They just show you these cool scenes, the music. I think Ancient Magus Bride might be another example. I think Mushoku Tensei does a good job sometime at doing that stuff. Calls Lord of the Ring as soundtrack wells up these emotions you might have forgotten you had for an experience that warms the soul. But what I love the most is feeling what the passage of time is like for a being like Freeran. Seasons change in an instant, months can pass scene to scene without you even knowing. She buys some item at a shop, goes on a casual stroll, gets lost, a few seconds go by, she comes back. The shopkeeper's an old man. Like, if you really think about it, the shit that happens in the anime when he's, he's describing exactly the episode, and it sounds kind of boring. And maybe it is boring for reaction specifically, but just to sit down and just to watch something and get immersed into the world, I think it's perfect. It's just like a chill, low, you know, low vibe. Just so you're just you're just enjoying the adventure. You're getting immersed into the world with this cool ambiance, this calm setting. I know. There are so many little things you can miss if you're not paying attention. But if you're willing to sit down, turn off that TikTok brain for a second, and give yourself some time to really get absorbed in a slower paced show, I guarantee yeah. this is going to be one of the most beautiful tales you see all year. Yeah, and it's two course too, right? It's a very slow burn show, but I think it's two course 24 episodes or something. But that isn't the only thing with potential this season. Undead Unlock already has some of the most Ah, invent you see that. You see that right now. You see this, guys? They have a built-in cock sensor for this guy. That's right. I've seen. We got a guy with Wolverine-esque regenerative powers turning his entire body into a weapon. It's really cool how he like, can like float with blood. This is how he like mobilizes himself. Firing off his own body parts, using his regen to gain momentum mid-air. It might not be the most complicated powers, but you can get a sense the author has put a lot of thought into how the simplest abilities would actually affect a person's fighting style if they refined all their mechanics to the absolute peak. And I Again, cock sensor. All their mechanics you see this right here? You see this right here? Built-in cock sensor. No, this is not a cloth he's putting on there. No, this is a built-in cock sensor. Peak, and I love that feeling. Shonen Jump have been on fire recently with pretty much all of their anime releases. This might not cause as big of a splash as some of their other hits, but it's- I think it's definitely worth watching. We definitely did check out a couple episodes for the action we got. Pretty fucking good. It's definitely one of the dark horses this season, along with this one. Aside from knowing it was- Apothecary Di- Is that how you say it? Apothecary Diaries? We are gonna watch this. In fact, I have episode one for you after this stream. It's gonna be one of the most gorgeous looking anime in four and manga readers were very, mm -hmm. very excited. I didn't know what to expect out of Apothecary Diaries. So I'm glad to say that after the premiere- The girl designs are insane. Episode one, when I watched it last night, immediately you just hit with a bunch of fucking milk because the entire premise is that you're like serving for this emperor in a palace and this palace has only milfs. It's just a bunch of concubines. They're all just fertile women, just mature milfs, just ready to have your kids. These Chinese emperors were living like literal emperors. I mean, they are emperors, but holy shit. The amount of milfs in this show, oh, bro, it's fucking goaded. Just, it, this, this, there, there is an actual story to it too, right? This show isn't just about a palace of milfs, but if they call this show the palace of milfs, I would say, yeah, that's quite accurate too. Yeah, I realized, oh, this is just House MD in Imperial China. We got Pretty much because she's like going around solving these like medical illnesses and stuff that everyone in this place is like uneducated, but she actually is educated. She is literate and she's like a low ranking person that got sold in here and she like rises the rank slowly. Well, not even slowly. She's already the fucking like main assistant of one of the most important mills in the fucking palace. But like she uses her like knowledge of different herbs and shit. And like she like solve these mysteries and she'll rise up and yeah, stuff like that. You got Gremlin Walter White cooking up different drugs for the royal palace mixed in with a bit of political intrigue. This the milfs, man. This pink haired girl, man. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. A bit of political intrigue. This is the main waifu right here. This one, this one right here. Intrigue. This one definitely piqued my interest. I'm just waiting for that hook to get me fully in. But he got no balls though, right? Because they're all castrated, because they're all eunuchs, right? But this is straight up from the anime? 
Now, this is probably some kind of like fancy. This is probably like some other girl like thinking, like fantasizing about him because every girl like thirsts over this guy right now. Invested. I'm gonna be real though. My stupid ass didn't even know what an apothecary was before. I still don't know what a apothecary is. I'm just assuming like it's a word for people to have knowledge in like herbs and shit. Watching this show. I know that's a me thing, but how about a name that even my dumb ass can understand? If we want to brand this anime should just be called the Palace of Milfs. I guarantee you, if the title of this show was called The Palace of Milfs, it would do so much better. And safe name, we can just call it The Pharmacist Journals, but Yeah, Pharmacist Journals, that works too. Personally, there's one I think that's more the Palace of Milfs. Thematically accurate. Memoirs of a crack dealer. That works too. Lid on. Into the oven. 170. Two, two and a half hours, and forget about it. What's Gordon doing? You got a cooking anime? There's a new firefighter anime saving a Tokyo that's been in I guess he's just making a joke that he put in the oven for too long and he forgot about it and there's fire everywhere. Golf by flames after someone called Jujutsu Kaisen mid. It's good to see a firefighter. So this is like fire force, but realistic, right? It's around me where they actually fight fire like actual firefighters as opposed to the usual anime shit where they fight fires by, you know, just... This is fire force. Another anime that I want to check out. It's like a shonen show about firefighting. Like how crazy of a concept is that? Beating the shit out of it. Okay, what's next? Bull... Bullbuster by Studio Bullbuster Nut? <laughs> no shot. It's called Bullbuster by Studio Nut. There, there's no, there's no fucking. This isn't a coincidence, right? No shot. You sick bastards. This is probably the most grounded mecha anime I've ever seen. You have a small company. Mecha anime is, it's a hit or miss. I think a lot of people, some people are diehard mecha fans, but some people, most people, they just get turned off by the mecha genre itself. Like even if a mecha show was good. People just don't want to watch it because it's mecha, you know? You got to have diehard fans that love mecha, they just don't. Companies scraping by to operate their mechs that look like they should be doing work in a construction site, tasked with exterminating giant beasts in a world where kaiju have cost the world hundreds of lives. So, what's the biggest threat facing all of humanity? Paperwork. And right there, some Japanese bureaucrat just busted a studio nut. Ron Kamahashi's Forbidden Deductions, a detective who detectives so hard he's this is another boys love show that I think it's a boys love show, right? There's a lot of boys love show this year. Been banned from detectiving ever again because, ooh, he's so quirky. He's not like other detectives. Why? Why? Every time he solves a case, he tells the culprit to kill themselves. <laughs> yeah, this is just Sherlock meets slow to God. Now what? time for... Is this a Nisekai? All right. Yes, and wait, I saw a comment. Attack on Titan is Isekai. Sorry, sorry, Mecha. Sorry, that's a different comparison. Attack on Titan is the Mecha, it's Fletch Mecha. Anyways, is this an Isekai? What anime is it? Or is it just fantasy? We got a redo of Redo of Healer where every character isn't clinical. Redo of Redo of Healer? No, 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 this is the popular webtoon. A Returner's Magic should be special. Again, I talked about this. This is another series in Korea. This webtoon is very popular. It's, it was like on its peak, I think it was like in that tier, not as popular as solo leveling, but this is extremely popular webtoon. I think it's a story about a person who will like finish. It's, it's like he's doing new game plus right now, right? Well, not really. He gets like sent back in time or some shit. I, I think that's how the story premise goes, but uh, it didn't get much advertising. So I, I don't think the show is really doing much or not many people are covering it insane there's an actual villainous anime about definitely not marie antoinette yo i hear some no this isn't the villainous anime there, there's another villainous anime that people are telling me to watch going back in time to stop the french revolution with the power of moe and checking a privilege now berserk of gluttony here's something berserk of gluttony episode one and two i like the initial premise of the almost like revenge like story because like there's like these bunch of elites that's like shitting on you and it's like fuck and but then you get all these powers and you can shit on them back it's, it's that kind of story but not many people are too interested in it unlike anything we've seen all year all right get this you have a fan sort of online like, like some people call this just sword art offline based on the promo picture because it was so bad. You see protagonist, but he's cool because he wears a dark cloak with black hair. Yeah, Except initially, yeah. he's super weak and bullied by some pink-haired bitch, but luckily... Dude, every fucking show, I swear to God, follows the same formula. Luckily, there's a prestigious night... Eyes! Deadass! Eyes from Don Machi is in Berserker Gluttony. Look at the color scheme. One hair that protects him for some... Bro, you can't make this shit up. The armor is identical. Reason, and her name is Roxy, but 
But the real unique part is that he has a special skill that makes him overpowered even- Yeah, and it's it's really overpowered, but the special skill, everyone thinks it's trash in the beginning. Wow, surprise, right? Some guy with super OP skill, everyone thinks he's actually super weak, and the main character thinks he's weak. Surprise, actually, it's a super OP skill and nobody knows except you, and now you're gonna become super OP and flex on them hoes. You know what, that template, even if it's overused, it is overused for a reason, because it fucking works. It's just a great way to generate hype. Even at level one called Gluttony that allows him to absorb the stats of anyone he defeats and get this, he even befriends a- There are so many different anime comparisons right now. I think that was like Full Metal Alchemist and Reincarnate as a Slime. Now we got Reincarnate as a Sword because the sword is sentient too. Talk Holy shit, now I'm thinking about it. There is a lot of similar things in different animes that Berserker Gluttony has done. King Sword and oh my God, he starts killing God. We do kill goblins, but that's pretty much like every like fantasy show, right? There's a lot of goblin slaying. Goblins, so I don't think there's another anime like this out there right now. Ragnar Crimson was an anime. <sighs> Fucking got copyright striked. Some bullshit. We won the counter notification, but goddamn. If you're doing anime reactions on Ragnar Crimson, be careful with it because a certain studio will come after you. But this first episode, 40 minute, like, it, what was it? Like an hour long episode? First episode, Ragnar Crimson, fantastic. If you like, like, overpowered characters, like, being super cool, then yes, this is pretty much another anime like that. And they have trap maids. I mean, the manga readers were gassing up, and with the 40-minute premiere, I was hoping for more than just angry man who hates dragons, vows to kill dragons, and is also literally too angry to die. But, like, he tells his girls to fuck off too, right? In episode two or three, he's like, nah, the lolly pink haired girl... Fuck off, you're weak. Hi. Maybe this one could fill up the space for Turn Your Brain Off Edgy Show of the season, but there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of edge going around this season. So you better be doing something special to be standing mm. out. Trap me! Kingdom of Ruins. This show, I, it popped off in my channel. It's doing so well because I think a lot of people obviously are interested in the first episode. There's a People love revenge stories. I'm starting to realize. I love revenge stories too. I think if a person can relate to the theme of a story, they'll more inclined to watch it. I think revenge, vengeance is a very common theme that everyone can relate to, right? Personally, I love petty revenge, but this is basically just, this is genocide, right? <laughs> What the f- I know, I know for a fact this guy is not doing a reaction to this anime. What, what, is, what is he doing karaoke right now? Finally, it's here. Yeah. The crumbling. Guys, <laughs> I got Get it? The rumbling, but it's the crumbling for Attack on Titan. Finally, it's here. The crumbling. <laughs> you should have played immediately some Attack on Titan soundtrack. Guys, I gotta ask you something important because okay. I'm just not sure about this. Okay, okay. listen up. So we got I'm a listening. king announcing he's about to commit genocide. He kidnaps yes. a woman, strips her naked. That was weird. I don't like it when fan service turns into this, right? There, there. This is like the most degenerate kind of fan. I guess it's trying to be realistic. The king basically just strips Chloe in front of everybody, and like the premise is that she's a witch, and people hate witches. So the king like fucking just strips her naked. It's like, man, there's it's it's pretty like tasteless fan service. Can you even call this fan service? I think you can, because obviously, you know, it's it's a fucking naked girl in the middle of a fucking podium while everybody's fucking just going like this and taking videos of her, but it's just like, ugh. Naked in front of a cheering crowd. I think this is too more, it's, it's less about the fan service. It's more to incite like a, a visceral reaction of hatred for these fucking monkeys, right? Because the, the first episode is all about setting the fucking tone so that we can commit genocide in the future episodes and killing all these monkeys without feeling bad. That is the whole point of episode one. Then proceeds to execute her in cold She couldn't even finish her sentence, telling Adonis that she loved him. Old blood and parade her severed head around while the orphan kid she was taking care of screams. Yeah. Now. I think. Did he just voice? Did he just voice act this? It was like Giggle Sing Yamido. Care of screams. Yeah. Now. <laughs> that Yamido is amazing. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder if it'd be funny to make content where that where I do like shitty voice acting or meme stuff like that. Something similar to that on anime scenes. Now, I just want to confirm: is he the bad guy? I don't think so. Because you see a veiled queen on the side. He is just merely a tool. I think he's being used by the queen. If you're looking for peak edge this season... Or also, I, I, also another story is, are we the bad guy? Because, like, Adonis then goes on to kill all the monkeys. So you start questioning, like, holy shit, who's the bad guy here? Well, you found... I, 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 I don't think it's as simple as there is, like, a good person and a bad person. It's, it's morally great. In war and, in, in, in war and stuff like this, both sides can be bad. 
found it. This shows the subtlety of a white van that says free candy driven by Jimmy Savile. But you know what? I'm just a sucker for worlds where magic and technology collide. Because when you have giant golems murking tanks, getting yes. firebombed by F-35s while the angriest man on earth shoots- The a giant bullet. The fucking gigantification of bullets like this is sick. Comically large bullet into a skyscraper before summoning magic miniguns out of his ass. Then yep. I kind of don't give a damn. If this is edgy, then sign me the fuck up because I'm 33 and this is deep. Don't know. I love Edge, man. Edgy shows like the Kingdom of Ruin. I'm fucking eating that shit up every fucking week. And every every episode, there's some kind of plot twist, dude. It actually keeps you very entertained. Like, it hasn't really fallen off yet. Like, it's gotten a little bit less exciting because we moved away from the genocide stuff to meet with, like, the diff I'm not going to spoil it, but, like, there is, like, at there is some kind of plot twist that happens where you're like, what the fuck? I thought everything I knew about this show was wrong. <laughs> oh. The most masculine anime male character. <laughs> He's wearing Steve Jobs' black turtleneck too. Yeah. I don't even know how to describe this one. Coming from the late mangaka of Sakamoto Desuka, a pair of twins. I heard the author passed away recently, rest in peace. Trick a wealthy family to adopting them, not knowing that there are actually two of them, and they use that to just completely fuck with their lives. I Looks like a probably not like good content to watch to get like on, to make reactions on, but like it looks like entertaining. I guess whatever. I can't tell if this is meant to be hilarious or terrifying. This is like some dystopian YouTuber prank where every prank is written like that potato chip scene in Death Note. But hey, I'm not. So it's just funny in like a meme way. Going to be calling them out since it seems like calling out YouTubers in. <laughs> this fucking girl, man. This fucking girl, man. Maybe I need to start reacting to TikTok. Actually, I just sit there and just watch the TikToks. 2023 is like... That's my fucking location. We've got a new racing anime about Formula 4, a thing I've just learned about thanks to anime. And I feel bad because Initial D is also back with a sequel reboot. And look, Overtake is coming from the director of... Yeah, I don't think a lot of people are probably watching racing animes. I, again, like, akin to like mecha animes, I think. <clears throat> racing animes. Initial D is definitely like a... It's like a meme phenomenon. Everybody loves Initial D for its like Eurobeat music, but how many people actually watch the anime religiously? I think there is like a core diehard fans, but for the most part, you're either just like a racing fan or you're not. Fate Zero, Recreators, it looks like it's got some genuine heart put into it. They even made the effort to make sure all the sponsors are 100% accurate to what you'd see in a race. But this is Eurobeat. Ooh, oh, there an it is. anime about visual novels. This was alright, actually. Think Shirobako oh. mixed with new games set in the 90s, when an illustrator gets sent back in time to the golden era of visual novels where every anime girl had those fucking... Okay, well, I, I think this is like the... I, I forget the specific name. Fuck. It's, it's like a really sad anime, right? But, but uh... Fuck, I forget the name. But anyways, all the girls... What was the design idea? Like, they look fucking monstrous. If you take the hair off of these girls, have you ever seen girls like this with their hair off? Is that like a bald model? It is fucking terrifying. Fucking bug eyes. This one was interesting. Clanad. Clanad is the one, yes. First thing, even if you just want to see how much otaku culture has evolved from humble beginnings where Akihabara's electric town actually had electronics in it to whatever the hell is being made. She's gotta be the main character. Now. MILF Hypnosis Salon. I think we gotta start a new anime. If there's a visual novel called MILF Hypnosis Salon, bro, I'm going. I'm playing that fucking game. Oh, hey. Yes, exactly, Sea Dog. Yes. The girlfriend, girlfriend has another. Kanojo or Kamojo or some shit like that, right? Girlfriend, girlfriend. Another series that I think has potential, but I, I don't think a lot of people have really recommended me this series, right? Compared to, let's say, like, 100 girlfriends. ...of the season, and they're adding two new girlfriends for him to... <laughs> Only? Wow. Your, your, your roster of girls? Bro, this is just the fucking se first season of 100 girlfriends, bro. I mean, it's not fair to compare the amount of girls. But I'm a fucking anime called the 100 girlfriends that really, 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 really love you, right? But, okay, okay. To share? What's that? It's cute Five designs. girlfriends? Six girlfriends? You know Surely where this is going. In... You know where this is going. You know where this is going. A hundred girlfriends. An anime, a harem can only get so big. Wait. Right? Oh, shit. 
why is Elden Ring intro theme playing one more time? Roll. Okay, let's build it up one more time. And adding two new girlfriends for him to share? What's next? Yeah. Five girlfriends? Mm -mm. Six girlfriends? Mm -mm. Surely, even in anime, a harem can only get so big. Cue the boss theme! Right? Oh! Mother of God. The they Elden Ring. The final boss of harem anime has arrived. Yeah. While we're yeah. struggling to even get a single girlfriend, my boy's going for one. Two, Holy five, shit, this is so ten. epic. A hundred girlfriends is the goal and the journey has just begun. This is the one piece of Keep playing it. Lord of the Rings of Degeneracy. This isn't the story. Did we get to see how Cuddy's died there? Hold on, hold on. Watch, watch, watch. The Lord of watch, the Rings watch. Of very important attention. Okay, my bad. I thought it was actually her right cheek, but no, no, no. It's actually the upper left cheek. My bad. I, I kept saying right cheek in the reactions. But holy fuck, dude. This Elden Ring intro thing, like, this is so good right now with this. Single girlfriend, my boy's going for one, two, five, uh -huh. ten. A hundred girlfriends yes. is the goal and the journey has just begun. This is the one piece of Riz. The Lord of the Rings of Degeneracy. Oh, is this reverse? I was right? I should have never doubted myself. So it was on the right cheek. I was, how the fuck could I have been wrong? Come on, of course I wouldn't pay, pay attention to details like that. This isn't the story of a Giga Chad. This is the story of the Giga Chad of yes. Giga Chads. For a harem series Chad with Taro. girls, endless possibilities for a fandom to choose from, he managed to convince the anime community, the anime community, the group of thirstiest motherfuckers to ever walk uh -huh. this earth, that there is no best girl. Because every girl... Every girl is their own best girl in their different unique ways in comparison to the protagonist himself. Also, yes, the girls are lucky that they have Chat Taro. Not Ren Taro. Ren Taro is not the lucky one here. No, no, no. The girls are lucky. Oh, that's right. This man single-handedly ended the waifu wars. He's too dangerous to be left alive. I'm gonna be real. After the Kimi Zero, I think I love the girl lure, but I think a lot of people are starting to kind of lose interest in this show. I did watch it a lot for Nicole, though. Just for Nicole. That's, I don't know what else romance anime... Like, straight up, I don't give a shit about the main character or about, like, Shirakawa as much. They can like, like this new twist, right? The, the, the twins... Sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't spoil it. But there's a, tw there's a twist happening and, and you share. But I'm just here to watch Nicole, man. Do to impress me. I mean Nicole. Nicole right there. You see that? You see that? This is the main girl right here. What else romance I'm making? Do no, fuck these girls. No, no, no. Do to impress me. Right here. Right here. This girl right here. Nicole. Nicole. Watch this show for Nicole. Me, I mean, look at this. Our dating story. All right, we got the popular girl, the loser nerd who's never had a girlfriend. Never seen that one before. Wow, submissive loser, beta cuck, weeb, neat hikikomori, shut in, a virgin, uh, never went outside, no prospect for the future, uneducated, just fucking plays data live visual novels at home, you know. And then who does he get rescued by? A fucking the most popular girl in the school. And how many times has this formula been used in recent rom-com series? I can think of at least like fucking four, bro. Before, can't wait to watch for two. Kubo won't leave me alone. Komi-san can't communicate. What other ones are there, guys? Seasons just to see them hold hands. Shikimori-san is not a cutie. They just bait us really hard with that scene, huh? I mean, sex sells. Obviously, they're going to show immediately going with that. No way. We're 45 seconds in. Yeah. Is this what I think? Yeah. I mean, they even did this in the trailer, right? Because obviously, they want a hard impact. It, no, no pun impact. <laughs> no pun intended, but they, they, they want to hook you in, right? They want to get the audience attention. How do you do that? Boom, gal, beautiful gal. Boom, you're going to have sex. It's like, holy shit, really? I think it is. Virginity, the final boss of all gamers worldwide. Losing it has historically been one of gaming's toughest accomplishments, requiring the mastery of some of the hardest mechanics you can find in gaming, including downloading dating apps, touching grass, and even occasionally talking to women for decades. What did you just say? Downloading dating apps, touching grass, and even occasionally talking. to women for decades gamers have <laughs> how are you gonna show me a stolfo and that other trap and then, and then immediately and wait 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 how are you gonna show me this and then to women for decades <laughs> what are you doing what are you doing it's gamers have been trying to break the legendary record set by my runner alabama <laughs> slammer x 69 x but today we might have a new contender what? this is one man's story to destroy the losing virginity 
any percent speed run. What anime? Oh, Kimi Zero. Okay. Oh, failed run, guys. Failed run. No, I think it's actually a very wholesome story because the girl feels like she needs to put out or else the past boyfriends that she's had all got bored of her and dumped her. So she has this like feeling that she needs to put out and you know, offer sex to have a boyfriend. But then he's like the super submissive, you know, virgin neat weeb. Again, we've talked about all that, but he actually has a really soft side, a really nice side. And he wants to make sure that everything is intimate and proper. They want to do hand holding for, they want to go on proper dates before they actually have sex so that it'll be meaningful. And it's not just like a random one night stand and ruins the relationship, right? He did fail it. He did fail it. But still, I think he's a giga chat for refusing it. Go next. Let me read that. This is a summoning salt uh, reference, by the way. This whole sound, this whole soundtrack that played right here. If you watch summoning salt, and again, summoning salt does like videos on like um, anime speedruns, but Giga Pot, Giga Pussy Mat, Giga Pussy Smasher 420. I'm gonna steal this name for a different in-game character name. Would go on to become the first runner in history to compete in the hundred smash category of the losing virginity speedrun. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, I did. This is the outro portion of the video. Another dub video from Gigguk as usual. Please go give it a like. Please go subscribe to his channel. You know, he only has 3.54 million subs. You know, and this video did only get 650,000 views in, eight, in 18 hours. So please, you know, we want, we want to show support to these smaller content creators moving forward. And as usual, we do these live reactions live on stream 7 a.m. PSD on YouTube. Hope to see you there sometime. Goodbye, guys.